may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, share, subscribe, like this video, make sure you put your prayer request in the bottom. It's going through some articles, and evidently this has been going on for a little while, that the U.S. government is doing quite a, thing, quite a bit of things against Israel. Now get this, it says the U.S. government's to probe Israel company that manufactures iron dome com components. Which in other words, they're sanctioning this company that's also in America, but it's run by Israel, and all these components go to the iron dome system. It says the United States government has opened up an unprecedented legal probe into the uh, Frankenstein metals, the Israel company that manufactures components for the Iron Dome system. U.S. authorities argue that Israel has, uh, Israel's firm has received U.S. government grants and was not entitled to and in these funds have enabled the metal company to sell products in the U.S. market at inflated prices. And according to a report, Israel's uh, Mary of Daily News on Wednesday. Israel's officials are reportedly surprised at Washington's decision to investigate the company and impose sanctions against the long-established manufacturer of components industries worldwide. So this is the pretty much the biggest defense company in Israel that makes the Iron Dome system, which is probably the greatest defensive weapon against missiles and uh, drones that we've ever seen probably ever and now the u.s is going after that it says founded a 19 and 1940 a family-owned company uh, uh finkenstein metals i think that's how you say it has its headquarters in northern israel town of afola and additional facilities in the state of illinois while this company market share in the United States market is less than 3%, it constitutes around 75% of the company's total sales volume. The U.S. authorities argue that the company conducts uh, contracts that the trade agreement between the United States and Israel, which was signed in 1985, the purpose of which to, is to reduce and sometimes eliminate all duties of Israel's products and services exported to the United States. However, Finkelstein exists in a gray zone due to its dual presence in the United States and Israel. U.S. sanctions on the company have reportedly had a negative impact on the company's ability to operate because it's a crucial supplier of defense industry. The U.S. government's harsh measures could potentially also impact major defense industry projects in addition to the Iron Dome system. Gosh, I'm mighty. So this has been going on by the mining administration for a while. that They've been attacking even Israel's companies, and they're doing that again now talking about what we talked about in uh, the two uh, states there or the two counties that uh, he was going to literally, and I think it's one of them to Samaria, that those companies, he was going to sanction them also. The Israel's foreign minister is attempting to resolve the legal crisis with help from the Israel Association of Manufacturers. The president, Ron Tomer, criticized the U.S. government's legal measures as uh, contracting the American-Israel trade agreement. This is an unfounded lawsuit, which may lead to a closure of, a fa of the factory. If, it's, uh, if this case is successful, it may harm other Israel's companies and contrary to existing trade agreements. So the Biden administration has literally been going after everything Israeli while they've been supplying weapons and everything else to the Palestinians. And people wonder why that X was formed yesterday and why judgment is on us. Now, everybody laughed and they mocked about that yesterday. I've seen it all over the place. But right here, these are the things that I'm reading you and I'm finding is why that X was formed. God knew. I'm telling you, God has raised his hand off of America. Many people don't believe that, but I am keep giving you proof after proof while this stuff is coming. 
U.S. authorities' legal actions against the metal company could be, potentially impact broader American-Israel trade relationships, he warned. Establishing industrial plants frequently requires government grants. However, Washington ultimately rules the arrangements con constituted a prohibited subsidy. Uh, then the world incur custom duties on products exported uh, to the American market. In such a scenario, it would become more difficult for Israel companies to export their products, services to the U.S. market. So he's trying to kill them financially. Due to the limited domestic market, the Israeli $500 billion economy is highly export-oriented with particular focus on the U.S., European, and Asian markets. The United States and Israel are close allies with extensive trade and military cooperation. However, the Biden administration has increasingly sharpened its tones against Israel, as well as the Israel residents of Judea. That's what we're talking about, Judea and Samaria. That was the two that he is now going after them. Uh, in December, Biden's administration decided to deny entry visas to dozens of Israel West Bank residents who were accused of attacking the Arabs, which did not happen. They've proven that, that it was the Arabs that was attacking them. At the time, the U.S. Secretary Blinken argued that Washington constantly opposed uh, actions that uh, undermined stability in the West Bank, including attacks of Israel settlers against Palestinians, which is, listen, Israelis try to live in peace, and the Palestinians are constantly attacking them, constantly. That's why nobody wants the Palestinians. That's why nobody took them in when all this stuff started happening, because this happens every, everywhere they go. This is what they do. They try to take over your government. That's what they do. Israel's been arguing this forever, and Israel has still tried to live with them, because nobody else wants them. So that's just something that, like I said, is the, when you go against Israel, bad things happen. Now, this happened yesterday. It says the IDF ship, uh, ship mounted Iron Dome shoots down hostile drones. So they've added the Iron Dome to their Navy ships, which is pretty incredible, actually. It says here the Israeli Navy has shot, has used a ship mounted Iron Dome defense system to intercept and neutralize a suspicious aerial target in Israel's airspace on Monday, close to the southern city of Elliot on the Red Sea. The hostile target was identified as a drone. Israel's authority reported that there was no damage or injuries. Now, this was reportedly the first time the ship-mounted Iron Dome system was used in a real security threat situation. Uh, beachgoers in Elliot managed to film the moment. I watched it. It's pretty incredible. Known as the mil Israel military as the Sea Dome, the Naval Iron Dome Aerial Defense System is deployed at SAR-6 class Corvettes, the newest and the most advanced vessels in the Israel Navy. Israel has one of the most advanced aerial defense systems developed in response to the growing missile and drone attacks from Iran regime and regional terror proxies. So this is the company that creates this is the one we went after. And that Biden administration is trying is sanctioning. It says here Hezbollah Hezbollah Hezbollah. Blah, I'll get it out here in a minute. Later says Biden pushing Israel to a ceasefire and a historical defeat, which is exactly what they're doing. So Iran's even saying America is pushing Israel to a defeat. The Secretary General of Lebanon uh, terror group Hezbollah Hassan celebrated recent reports of the impending ceasefire between Israel and Hamas and the Gaza Strip, saying it would be it would bring about a historical defeat for Israel, which our country is pushing. Speaking at this uh, event for Iran General Mossad Riza and his six companions who were killed, Nasrallah, Nasrallah said that U.S. President Biden pushed Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Nahu to accept the truce. Biden's recent phone conversations with Netanyahu confirms the responsibility of the U.S. administration for the Israeli war on Gaza. It's just not our responsibility. The U.S. could not be uh, could have stopped the Israel war in Gaza. But it's disregarded the genocide and moved up the uh, Israel killings of the foreign relief workers, he claimed. According to Hezbollah's general, Biden also ordered the dismissal of two IDF officers following the tragic killing of seven world kitchen aid workers and troops. So Biden is telling them who to fire. He further called the recent withdrawal of IDF troops for the uh, Giannis a defeat, stating that the forces were expelled from it. Uh, 
Right. Let's see. Some of these are awarded real bad. Stated that their forces were expelled from it humi humiliated. They was let's see, humiliated, that's it. It's not the way it's spelled. It's actually spelled wrong on here. The steadfast and the fight of the Palestinian resistance are behind the Israel military withdrawal, he said. He further mocked Israel's defense minister, Gallant, calling him detached from reality and claiming that just hours after Gallant had said Hamas had been eliminated, the Zionists suffered a defeat, which did not happen. Six months after the war on Gaza, the goals were set have not been achieved. And Israel's situation was worse than every possible way. That's not the truth. They've actually defeated them in record time, and they don't like that. As part of the latest hostage deal proposal, Israel would agree to a six weeks truce, uh, a gradual withdrawal of the last remaining troops in Gaza, and the release of around 900 prisoners, which now we know is not going to happen. And Ezra also spoke warmly of the recent assassinations, who Lebanese media reported the only non-Lebanese member sitting at Hezbollah's eight-member council is leading body led by Nazarella himself. Says, says, speaking about the strike that killed these people, he said, what is new about the attack is targeted the Iranian consulate, which is considered Iran territory. He stressed that the move was considered a direct attack against the Iran. And he ain't seen nothing yet. The made, this made the leader of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard decide a military response to the Israeli attack. Uh, he also added that the following Israel miscalculation, the Americans and Israel has recognized that the Iran response to the attack on the Israel, um, the Iran consulate is coming. Which so far, they've been all talking, no show as usual. It says here, the Iran attack is inviolable. No fly zone in Iran, which we talked about last night. And you, and Yahoo rejected the ultimatum, which we talked about, and announced a new operation under the weight of this, of an outcry. It says the negotiation between the U.S. and Israel and Iran has collapsed. That's what we told you it would. Announced late night, late last night, the Israel army to begin operations in Rafah, stressing that a date has been set. There is also a wreck regarding the hostage release agreement. Hamas said that few hostages have been left alive, certainly not the number that Israel is asking for. It says, it should be noted that there is a general outcry against Netanyahu, and that's all been done by America. It says, the Israel experts stated that there is no prime minister in Israel who can end the war without destroying Hamas. If Netanyahu does not enter Rafa, there will be no, there will, this will be his downfall. Let's see. See, despite the pressure, the Israel prime minister insists that the uh, Hamas members of the southern tip of Gaza Strip requires a ground invasion by the IDF. In a videotaped statement today, Monday, April the 8th, which was yesterday during the eclipse, he said a date has been set for an attack on the city, which Israel says is one of the Islamic group's last strongholds in the Palestinian enclave. He did not say the invasion would take when the, uh, the invasion would take place, but retired, uh, reinstated that the victory over Hamas fighters requires entering Rafah. This will happen. There is a date, he said. We work to achieve all the goals all the time. It says Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan said entering during a speech of the killing of the IRGC. Um, the upcoming strike against Israel will be different from the previous ones because Syria uh, because in Syria, they hit the Iranian embassy. Iran's foreign minister said that the communicated, he communicated with the U.S. through the proper diplomatic channels that is responsible for Israel's full support. We have informed the countries of Israel has crossed all red lines and that punishment is certain. Iraq's, Iran's foreign minister is accused Washington of authorizing the daily strike on the consulate. America is responsible for the incident and will be held accountable, uh, the Iran official said and told reporters opening up a new consulate in the Syrian capital. The fact that the U.S. and European countries oppose the U.N. security resolution condemning the attack, the Iran embassy is a sign that the U.S. gave the Zionist regime Israel the green light to carry out the attack. How would the U.S. and Europe react to the attack of on an American or European embassy in Ukraine? Why did the U.S. condemn the 
condemned a terrorist attack that violated international law. It seems that Netanyahu could not carry out such an attack without the U.S. green lights, what he's saying. So in other words, America sucked up to Iran so we wouldn't get hit, and they still turned around and threatened us. See, that's what I said. When you're dealing with these people and the Palestinians and the people in Iran, these governments, they don't care what you do and how you do it. We are the enemy. We will always be the enemy, just like the Jews will always be the enemy. They don't want to share land with the Jews. The Bible pretty much lays it out. These are just enemies of the Jews, and they want them eliminated, and it's not going to change. But that's usually what happens, and people just keep ignoring it, and that's where we are at today. Now, this is an article I wanted to read. It says, is, is worldwide Jew hatred setting up the stage for the tribulation period? And it is. In our current social and political paradigm, people tend to see things two-dimensionally, usually to the left or to the right. Of course, as current trends bear witness to, this is causing a great deal of social and political friction, which often spills over into violence. Sometimes it is nefarious forces who have deeper agenda, and sometimes it occurs uh, organically aided by a spiritual enemy. That's what, that's the truth. That's what all this is. And who hates the Jews and who hates God? The latest trigger point for demonically inspired violence against the Jews is the war that Israel is conducting against Hamas and Hezbollah. And you see the devil coming out in all these people. Aside from the spiritual uh, paradigm, with uh, which Christians view as a stand with Israel, most uh, radical or rational people, even believers, unbelievers, would have a sense of that uh, sympathizing with Hamas right now to, is akin to endo uh, endorsing the kidnap, torture, rape, beheading, and murder of the Jews. People who thought the horrors of the Holocaust were long behind have suddenly become shaken by the terrifying, terrifying sense of Foreboding as people the uh, the world over call for the uh, annihilation of the Jews once again, which is what we're seeing. In the early stages of Hitler's plan to exterminate the Jews, per pe perhaps ordinary people in far-off nations would have pleaded ignorance to the Jewish plot on the basis of the news that didn't reach them. However, this time around, the evidence of Jew hatred is there all over, and everyone sees it. And they cannot resist posting their uh, material online about it. It must be said that the virtual imponent, uh, uh, virtual important for Christians right now to hold the biblical worldview. In short, this means that the believer clings tightly to a very, to very scriptures that are practical and spiritual wisdom that enables us to reconsider or consider everything we encounter in the world from a godly perspective. All the people, believers and unbelievers, were faced with a problem or a challenge. Our worldwide becomes the source of the foundation of which we make in our actions or responses. This means that whatever content we filter into a worldview will determine how we act, speak, or think. Therefore, it is probably a little surprise that most vulgar displays of of this hatred towards the Jews have been found on the college and university campuses because many colleges and universities are of this era are indoctrinating their students with uh, politically progressive and unbiblical ideas. The fundamental reason behind the, this is that students are taught what to think rather than how to think. It says here, the professors uh, dominate and uh, intimidate their students. If you go up against them, the, their grade suffers. So another, another piece of proof of that we're in the last days. Like I said, Satan's done this before. He tried in World War II to eliminate the Jews. And here we are again. And people are taking up the Palestinian flag to, to take out the Jews. It's happening once again. This is what Lucifer does. See, he thought that time was his time. He thought that Hitler was his guy. Well, this time... Here we go again. He knows this guy will be his guy. He knows the rapture of the church is coming. That's why we're on here. He sees the signs like the eclipse, just like we do and understands. Now, he was sitting back yesterday waiting to see what God was going to do. Was this a warning? Was it the rapture? He was doing the same thing. 
See, while most Christians are turning against each other, they're not even seeing the whole picture of what's going on. That this is a war of all wars. This is the end war that's being set up. And we don't have much time. That's why we tell you to stick around. Don't run away now that the eclipse is gone. The eclipse proved its point, what was going to happen, that judgment is coming. I've given you proof of that by our country going after their defense departments, their food uh, departments, all this stuff. Our country is going after Israel and literally putting sanction on them, on them, on their companies. Now, most Americans don't know this, but God knows it. That's why he had it planned all the time before time that that X would be formed over us yesterday because he knew what the Biden administration would be doing at this moment. That's why that was there. That was a final warning for us to sit, get as many people on the boat as possible. That's what that was. Well, most people thought that they was leaving yesterday. Now, a lot of people is going to get aggravated. They're going to be running off, not realizing that was the final straw, as they would say, it broke the camel's back. Now, the more I dive into what we've been doing to Israel is almost unbelievable what this administration has done to the Jews by going after them, tell them who to fire, what to do, where to move. Now, in the code, it talks about us enslaving Israel. There's a country doing that. That is exactly what that is. And that's why judgment will be brought upon us. That's why. Trust the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Jesus died on the cross for our sins, past, present, and future. He died and was buried and rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. Trust the blood of Jesus. If you're lost out there, call upon him right now because your time is running out. We've told you and told you that we're just not going to be here much longer. So trust in the blood of Jesus. Call upon him and be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, the writing is on the wall. America has finally ditched Israel, which we told you was going to happen. The Bible says Israel will stand on her, on her own, and that is the case now. That means our time is more limited than it ever been. You will see judgments start to roll out around America in different places. It will get worse and worse. That's what's coming. Keep your eyes open and ears open. That shofar will go off at any time. From this point on, every day, it's a day to watch. God bless each and every one of you. If I don't see or hear from you again, I'll see you in heaven. Thank you once again for tuning in to Global Rapture Watchers, where we do daily updates here on YouTube. Letting you know that we're one day closer to our Lord and Savior coming back. Thank you for all the support for this channel. This channel was created for God's sheep. Those that are waiting for their Lord and Savior to come back and get us in these last days. We do updates once to two times a day here on YouTube. Thank you for all your support for the channel. God bless each and every one of you.